One of the subscribers to my channel, Fordman, has asked some questions about the details of how I retrofitted the Bridgeport Series 1 CNC. This is a machine that I obtained from a friend that had a machine shop that he closed, and it has a serial number from about 1979. It's an older machine, but the iron's really good on it. As you can see, the ways are super nice on it. All the flaking is still in place, and the machine's nice and tight. It's a ball screw machine, so that obviously means that it has no backlash in travel. What I did is I got some eBay servos that I found about eight or nine years ago, and those were the drive portion of the retrofit. They're just some old, I think, Amatec motors was the name of them, and there's the encoder side of the motor, and there's the shaft side of the motor. That's one of my spares, of course. This is one of the early adapter plates that I used for the Z-axis. I think I didn't use that plate because I ended up having a dimension wrong on it or something. But So you can see the Y-axis servo fits nicely underneath the machine. There is a headspace limitation as you would bump into the knee with a super long servo. So these short servos were a good choice. I added some modern home switches here. You can see the old Bridgeport big micro switch in back, which is actually just the over-travel switch. And the new Honeywell switch is a home switch. Here's the X-axis servo. I ended up reusing the old control panel and put my frequency drive potentiometer for the motor in here. I kept the Bridgeport forward reverse switch and then a stop and reset button which is master e-stop. It shuts off the spindle motor and it also shuts off all the controls so the machine won't move. The control software is Linux CNC. It's a free open source CNC package that's been around for a really long time. I'll probably put a link in the description because that one is too hard to describe just, uh, just in a quick overview. I put the computer monitor and the keyboard on a pendant. It's actually leftover parts from the original pendant from the Bridgeport and I ended up just cutting the tube right here and rotating it 90 degrees so that I could have a custom monitor mount to get everything out by the operator area. Here's where really most of the activity took place. I ended up scrapping all the Bridgeport electronics and did everything from scratch here. It's really not as scary as it sounds. The spindle motor, because this is in my home basement workshop, the spindle motor is controlled by this Hitachi X200 frequency drive. It brings single phase 220 in and then creates a three phase waveform to drive the big original one and a half horse, um, or actually two horse, sorry, the original two horse spindle motor. Motor control is done with Gecko servo drives. The company is called GeckoDrive.com and I've got the three servo drives for the X, Y, and Z axes and then there's one Gecko stepper drive for an A axis, a rotary axis that I also have on here. The rest of the enclosure is tremendously simple. Frequency drive for the spindle motor, a large toroid with a filter capacitor for the, the power, the DC power for the servo drives, um, an Allen Bradley 5 volt power supply for all the 5 volt electronics including the, uh, the encoders, um, a couple of little solid state relays for reading the signals from the home and limit switches, uh, two ganged together contactors which are actually just large relays for my master e-stop. Um, you might have noticed the Honeywell thermostat. That's my, uh, my thermostat for controlling the enclosure fan. If the enclosure gets too hot when it's all closed up, that'll come on, but it doesn't happen too often. The breakout board is made by a company called Probotics, and that takes the signals from the parallel port on the computer and uh, buffers those and then relays those signals off to the Gecko drives. And then the final piece of it is really just a standard PC. This is really just an old, crummy, dumpster-grade Pentium 4 computer that I have mounted on a plate on the door of the system. As you can see, all the cables just travel from the door right into the main enclosure. It's a nice convenient spot to mount the computer and for access. Linux CNC does not need a high power computer to run it. This is all pretty low power stuff. This is a computer from probably 12 or 14 years ago and it's certainly adequate for what I do.
There's a couple of outlets at the back of the enclosure. One of those outlets is for feeding the coolant pump, actually just a mist coolant system. And then the other outlet goes over to the oiler. This machine has central oiling. So anytime the spindle motor is on, I have a signal going to a relay to turn on the oiler. There's the original Bezier oiler that came with the bridge port. Again, controlled by the CNC software to turn it on and off with spindle motor. And then a mist coolant system that I use once in a while, but not that frequently. Most of the time, because I'm just a hobbyist, I just take lighter cuts and I don't beat up the tooling that bad. Here's a close-up of the TAG on the Reliance Electric servos that I used. I've got a couple of these that I ended up saving for spares just in case because I knew they were surplus and I knew that I'd never be able to find one brand new if I ever failed a servo motor. So that's literally the five minute overview of the Bridgeport Series 1 CNC that I have in my basement workshop. Yes, it had to come down in five pieces. This thing weighs over 2,000 pounds by the time it's done and there's no way it's going to come down a set of residential basement stairs without being disassembled and rigged carefully.